The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. I had a deduction of $1,500, so I'm like, $1,500? What do I have a deduction for $1,500 for? And so I called the company. At this time, I had dropped the load when I actually got the statement. And I was like maybe two hours away from Super Eagle. So I called them and they, you know, I'm asking, like, I got a $1,500 deduction. And they're like, oh, yeah, because of fuel. And I'm like, fuel from where? <laughs> you know? So if you ain't got no gas, you got to get a load to get some fuel. And so they turned um, they turned off the, the fuel card. So I didn't have any fuel, but I was like two hours away from them. And I wasn't pulling no more loads because I want to know about this $1,500. And they told me that it was for fuel that was in the truck. So they were charging me $1,500 or fuel that was in the truck before I was in the truck. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Today's episode is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet. More on them later. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in this episode right here, we're going to be reacting to Rosie. Make sure you guys go over there and check out her channel youtube rosie she says that super eagle controversial company super eagle is the worst trucking company ever in this episode rosie speaks about the 800 dollars that the company claimed that she stole because she took her own mattress as well as other things that went wrong with her time there her time was very 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 short if you guys want to check out the video without the commentary definitely go over to her channel rosie no more wasting time let's get it hold on i don't know because i've never really seen any swift drivers or anything crazy so but super ego yes so let's get into it okay so about about i'm gonna say about three years ago i decided that i was gonna take on a job with super ego i didn't you know long story short i ended up going to this fuel stop and i met this guy he was driving for super ego and i asked him how the company was and he was just going on and on about how much he's making money and it's so good so i'm like i want to get in my bag too i mean the numbers he was telling me he was pulling in a week not gross and netting i was like hell yeah yeah <laughs> See, that's what these drivers be out here doing. They be selling the dream to you. You see a driver, you pull up on them, and you say, hey, driver, yo, what, what, what are you doing over there? Oh, man, I'm making buku money, and I'm doing this, and the company treats you like family and all like that. But see, that's where you still got to do your research. You still got to do your research. Sometimes you just can't take what people say about the company because sometimes people sell the company for them to get their referral bonus hey don't forget to let them know that driver xyz sent you let them know when you fill out the application and you be like oh okay and they probably might get about 15 to a thousand dollars for that referral so they just like recruiters because they could be considered truck trucking recruiters i was one of them I used to be a trucking recruiter, pull up in the truck stop and all like that and have some simple conversations with the drivers there. Hey, man, how you doing at your company, bro? Oh, man, they ain't treating me right. And I'm not getting no miles. Well, hey, how about come over to XYZ company? You know what I'm saying? You can make this kind of money. You can get this kind of miles. Don't forget, when you fill out the application and you talk to the recruiter, let them know that I sent you over there. Here's my card. It got my information, my truck number. Make sure you give them all of that so that I can get paid. So I went and I applied. I They immediately, it was like, probably like, I, I filled out the application on this day and by the next day they were calling me to come to orientation. So I'm like, okay, right? Well, actually I left Prime to try Super Eagle. I'm gonna tell you, I'm, we gonna talk about Prime too, okay? Everybody have their own experience, but we gonna talk about Prime. So I, uh, I left Prime to actually go to Super Eagle. And honey, I was at Super Eagle for a week, okay? And, and believe me, 
Not that I wanted to go back to Prime. But I was at Super Ego for one week, to be exact. So I get to Super Ego. And not to mention, right? Super Ego. Now, mind you, she only been there for a week. Probably a little bit more. But this is her account from three years ago. Okay, so this is not... This is not something that was recent. This is from her own account from what she experienced with Super Ego three years ago. And if I'm not mistaken, around that time, if I'm not mistaken, I think their requirements to come in was somewhere between a year to two years of experience. When you get there, there are like troops outside of drivers, troops of drivers outside, like, no, boycott it. Like, they're telling you the company is trash, right? But you know, I always say, you gotta get your own experience. So I went to go get my own experience. Exactly. Exactly. You got a whole bunch of disgruntled drivers. You got a whole bunch of negative reviews, negative videos. But still, you got to go there and see for yourself to see if your experience could be a little bit better than what everybody else is, is experiencing. But as I say, you got more than a thousand people that says the same thing that goes on with controversial company Super Eagle, allegedly. You probably might want to think long and hard about the decision that you about to make. Like, I'm going to get my own experience, okay. And so it was like probably two days of orientation before they take you out, you know, send you out to their lot to go get a truck, which is right there at the same place where orientation is. And um, so, you know, you, you know, when you go through orientation, I will say this, okay, they give you a paper, right? The paper has a list of fuel stations that you cannot go to because those fuel stations will not fill their trucks, okay? So, and then if they give you a load, certain loads, when you go, they'll call you and be like, hey, when you go pick up the load, say that you're running for this company, not Super Ego, because they won't give you the load. Looking for the perfect wallet? Meet the Ridge Wallet. With thousands of colors and styles, there's a Ridge for everyone. It is designed for everyday use, keeping your essentials organized without the bulk. Whether you prefer the classic look or the bold look, you'll find a Ridge wallet that fits your style. Crafted with durable materials, the Ridge wallet is built to last with its FRID blocking technology, ensures your cards are safe, making it the perfect on-the-go lifestyle. Upgrade from your dad wallet to your new everyday carry. Discover the perfect match at RidgeWallet.com. Embrace your style, functionality, and security. And don't forget, when you head over to the RidgeWallet.com to make your first order, make sure you use my promo code YouTube10. With that, you would get 10% off your first Ridge Wallet. Thank you, Ridge Wallet, for sponsoring today's episode. Man, that's that went on back then, too. Allegedly, it still goes on now. I've talked to a few former drivers there that still says that those things that she's saying right now that she went through three years ago is still going on now, allegedly. Those are red flags, and I, when you know when when it was when they were going on with, I was like, mm, maybe those people outside is right because this don't make no sense. <laughs> I have never heard of anything like that, but yes, I still kept on going because I was already there. I had a red flag, so I get in. They give me a truck. I get in the truck, and I, I think when I first put when I put my first load, it was like towards the end of the week. So that first week. When you do do lease purchase with them, they don't charge you for anything except for your fuel. That's the only thing they charge you for. They charge you for your fuel. So they charge me only for the fuel. That first load, I think it was like 2000 something. And it was just a straight shot home because I needed to get you know, my things and put it on the truck. And so my first paycheck was about $2,000. That was a pretty good paycheck. And that's across the board too. Your, your first paychecks seem to be pretty good. It just seems that the paychecks afterwards is all downhill. Why is that? Why is that? Why Why the first week? I, I guess that's the dream, the facade 
that they want to keep you thinking that, hey, well, since my first paycheck is going to be good, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to continue to get paychecks like that. But why is it always the second, third, or fourth paycheck that you guys come and get with them, allegedly? It always turns to shit. It already had fuel in the truck, and so I didn't have to put that much. I think it had like half a tank in the truck already. And so I didn't have to put that much. I went home, and, you know, that was that. Second week. When they get, well, not second week, sorry. That was one day, okay, from the last week. So now we're on to the, our first actual week or our second day. Well, how the third day, whatever you want to say. So they give me a load, I run, right? Pay period is coming up. You know, usually they send you your uh, your statement, I guess. I, I don't know how some companies do it, but they send it to you like two days before so you can view it so you kind of know what you're going to get. So they send me the statement. And when they send me the statement, it says that I had a deduction of $1,500. So I'm like, $1,500? What do I have a deduction for $1,500 for? And so I called the company. At this time, I had dropped the load when I actually got the statement. And I was like maybe two hours away from Super Eagle. So I called them and they, you know, I'm asking like, I got a $1,500 deduction. And they're like, oh yeah, because of fuel. And I'm like, fuel from where, <laughs> you know? And oh, that's another thing. If you're pulling their load, they only turn their gas on when you're on the load. When you're off the load, they turn the gas on off on you. Allegedly, they still do that to this day. If you're on the load, they'll turn your fuel card on so you can get some fuel. And I suggest that you fill up to the rim because after that load, you drop that load, they turn the fuel card off. To my understanding, allegedly. Oh, if you ain't got no gas, you gotta get a load to get some fuel. And so they turned they turned off the, the fuel card. So I didn't have any fuel, but I was like two hours away from them and I wasn't pulling no more loads because I wanna know about this fifteen hundred dollars. And they told me that it was for fuel that was in the truck. So they were charging me fifteen hundred dollars for fuel that was in the truck before I was in the truck. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. They charge you. $1,500 for fuel that was already in the truck. Say, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. From somebody else that they took the fuel amount from. Oh man, that's some shady, That that's some diabolical work right there, man. Whoever that is taking that out on you is double dipping double time, man. So the person that was in the truck before already had about $1,500 worth of fuel in the truck. That didn't have nothing to do with you. You got the truck, you got in it, you start driving, and they felt that since you're in the truck and you're driving, they are gonna tax you for that fuel? Wow, that's that's some diabolical work right that there. That makes any sense. The fuel, that was, the half a tank that was already in there, plus whatever, the, the little bit of fuel that I did use that they had already deducted. And so um, they said to me, that that is a policy and i was like well when i was in orientation i didn't see that ain't nobody said that so how is it a policy that you charging people for fuel that was already in the truck when they got in the truck that's double dipping because i'm pretty sure you already took that money back from whoever put it in there initially right again drivers this is her account from three years ago so are they still doing it now I don't know. I certainly hope not. If the truck already comes with fuel that's already in there, you best believe that they got their money for that fuel from the last person that was in the truck. So hopefully that policy isn't policy anymore. And if it was policy, why wasn't it told during orientation? See, it's a lot of stuff. Drivers, you're going to have to find out during orientation. You're going to have to read that fine print. Maybe they didn't tell you in orientation, but it was probably written in the fine print somewhere. A lot of the stuff that they're going to do at orientation, they just going to keep the facade going so they could get you in the truck. Everything else afterwards, you're going to have to find out for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? I've never heard of anything like this in my life. And so they're like, yeah, we're going to put the papers up so off because we've been getting a lot of complaints from the drivers. Well, how about this? How about you get my $1,500 and then next week when you put that up or whenever you decide to put it up, then we can talk about you, the duck and fuel. And even if, so even if you did charge me for fuel, right? This is a truck. A half a tank of gas ain't $1,500. This is not no airplane. Like, come on, really? Half a tank of fuel? $1,500 for a half a tank of fuel? Ain't a fill up for both 
tanks, diesel. And I average around maybe $800, $900, depending. But $1,500 for a half a tank? What? Wow, that's mad work right there, man. So, I didn't want to pull no loans. I'm like, listen, I'm not pulling no loans until y'all give me my money. And so then they started talking about, oh, well, let's talk about it. And I'm like, listen. I don't want to talk about nothing. They kept asking me if I'm quitting. I don't want to talk about nothing but these $1,500. I need my coins in my bank, okay? My girl said, we done talking. I ain't got no more talking. All right. After going back, I didn't want to talk about I started emailing them because, listen, I need this on record. I don't have time. So then they come with disagreement. I, they try to make peace because I told them, I said, I don't want to talk about no I, I want it on email because... Listen, I need proof of everything that you guys are saying, all right? So then they come with this deal and they like, we'll put $1,000 in your account and then over time, we'll take the $1,000 back. So I'm like, now you telling me that you're not going to just rob me blind behind my back. What you're going to do is you're going to give me back the money and rob me in my face. And okay, I'm going to be okay with that. So that was going on and on. It was. Wow. Okay. Okay. We, we, we'll give you $1,000, but just know. That we're gonna take it back eventually. But wait a minute though, why take it back at all? That did not have nothing to do with the young lady that was in the truck at that time. So I guess the way y'all figure it is you put her in a truck, and if it has fuel already, you wanna get compensated for that fuel that's already in the truck that you already got compensated for. Like, take it or leave it, it's not what I'm saying. So I was like, you know what? No problem. They wanted me to take it and continue to run. I said, all right, I'll take it. I'll continue to run. At this point in my mind, I'm like, you know what? You ain't even going to win with this company. Just get them little hot thousand dollars. All that. So when they put the money in my account, right, I had to check. When it when it was deposited and I seen it was deposited, and they kept calling me. They was like, oh, we got to get your load. I'm like, listen, I ain't running no more loads. I quit. I'm like, yeah, now I told them that I quit. So then after I told them I quit, I didn't know what was going on. The bank called me. They were trying to reverse the payment that they put in my bank and take the thousand dollars back. So the bank called me, they like, what's going on? And so I told them what was going on. And so then they suggested I put a stop payment because mind you, I didn't know anything that was going on. I put a stop payment on. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here, right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider, okay? Y'all got two options. Well, one, but two options. You can either subscribe for the channel for more. And if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early, make sure you join. Join the channel, all right? Shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to the show. Wow, that's crazy. This is the second time that I heard a story from a driver that a black ops company, I'm not sure if it was Super Eagle, it probably was, allegedly tried to take their money back. He actually showed that the company tried to do a reverse payment to get their money back. So this young lady like, yo, I, I see that I got my money. I went and took my money out. Y'all trying to take it back. Good luck with that, bro. Good luck with that, man. That's wild. They tried to take the money back. What? It was like, oh, okay, you quit? You quit? Okay, all right, don't worry about it. 24 hours later, we're going to take our money back. That's what I was telling the young lady. She had a, a issue with a company and they reversed payment on her. I told her, I was like, as soon as you get that money, you take it out of that account and you put it into a different account. See drivers, I think this is what you're gonna have to do in your repertoire when you start getting with black op companies, right? I think that you're gonna have to start getting a separate bank account, okay? Not don't give them your your main account which you pay bills and savings and all like that. No, 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 no. You you get yourself another bank account. Like if you were Huntington or Chase, you can always set up a separate account. I, I know a few drivers that got 
multiple accounts, including myself. I got I got about four or five bank accounts. I got one account for the money to come in. I got another account for everyday use. I got another account for savings. And then I got another account for, for expenses. But I think what you guys are gonna have to do from now on, uh, if y'all don't have a regular bank account, there are accounts like Chime, Cash App, and a couple of other internet bank accounts that you can set up too. But I think that you guys need, definitely need when y'all when y'all go with these black op companies, you're gonna definitely need a separate account. So when that happened, they couldn't get the money now. They super, super mad. So now they're gonna tell me, they're gonna call me and tell me I need to bring the truck back. Mind you, you gotta track it on the truck. You can see I'm literally right around the corner. But see, the thing is, I had to use the little bit of fuel I did have to drive back to the company because I was gonna get them a piece of my mind. But all of this was squared away on the way back. And so what happened was they wanted to put me out on the side with all my belongings. I was like, absolutely no. I am in. Chicago, I know I can find a job. My ER clean, everything is clean. You ain't gonna leave me high and dry just because you try to rob me. And you still did rob me, but. Yeah, they only gave you a thousand. You, you did say earlier that they took 15 from you. But now they trying to kick you out the truck. You already said, baby, I'm already done. She says, I'm right down the street. You don't even have to worry about me not bringing back the truck. I'm right down the street, baby. Let's hear the continuation of how she finished off the week. So, no, we're not doing that. So I ended up actually applying for another job and I ended up getting that job in about three days. So yes, I, I was camping out in a super evil truck with all my stuff, you know, but I, it was a low point for me because I felt so defeated. You understand what I'm saying? Like, how did this even happen? And to be so far away, you can't even use the fuel card and get no gas and go back home, nothing because they not gonna turn it back on until you're on a load, in which you could have accepted the load and filled up and just, but I just want to avoid the problem because how far was I gonna get, you know? So anyway, I ended up getting on with this other company and after I transferred all my things over, then I took their truck back to them, which was like, I was, the whole time I was like 10 minutes away. And then I took their truck back and then they was like, they tried to say I stole their mattress. Baby, it's not that deep. Cause I'ma tell you, when I was at Prime, I did buy, I bought a pillow top mattress. It was like 800, that was my mattress, okay? I don't need your mattress. <laughs> and I took my mattress with me. So they were trying to say I stole their mattress. I never took your mattress. They still try to get something out of this driver, man. Maybe another black op company that probably might I treat her a little a little bit better this is her account for three years ago so maybe there was better choices out there than it is now well that's going to do it for this episode guys let me know in the comments below what do you think about this story time right here with this young lady shout out to rosie I'll definitely go over to her channel and subscribe to her channel and let her know that lockout men sent you i'm glad everything worked out for her and she was able to get back up on her feet and not let the company take her further down because it is depressing it is exhausting when you get with these black op companies and they treat you poorly they supposed to treat you like the respectable driver that you are but they just treat you guys like cattle and you shouldn't be treated that way so again, guys, I, I implore you to do your research and do all of your due diligence when you're looking for companies, especially black op companies. But guys, let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Until next time, everybody.